by me in America. Everything when you have music in a movie, there are a lot of different ways you can go about it. For instance, there's a musical where characters will spontaneously break out into song and dance, and other people in the scene will inexplicably know the lyrics and choreography of the song. By the definition of a musical, the songs must also be a part of a unifying plot, although often there are unrelated side plots in a soliloquy type scene. Also, it's usually never addressed whether or not the characters rehearse and choreograph the scene ahead of time. You're supposed to enjoy the music as an exaggerated statement of the feelings of the characters, with no need for it to make sense literally. Or you can have a score playing over top of the movie scene to add emphasis and emotional direction. The director doesn't trust you to feel scared here from just the images, the dialogue, and the sound effects. He needs to ensure the emotion you are intended to feel is the one you are feeling, so he makes you listen to this specific piece of orchestral music that was designed custom for this moment in the film. You can scare the audience with dissonant, irregular noise. You can make them feel excited and victorious with a bombastic march that builds to a satisfying explosion right when the hero beats the bad guys. It doesn't even have to be original music, it can be quoting a piece of music from another film. It could be a modern hit. Or maybe even a golden oldie. It just depends on what you want the audience to feel. It's easy to see why almost all movies use these methods. I mean, if you can have a direct way to subtly inform your audience of the emotion they should be feeling, why wouldn't you use it? But also consider the alternative. How does the audience feel when there's no music, when you don't tell them what emotion to have? You just put them in the space with the characters and the sound, and you make them watch with the ambiguous silence of real life. Funny how? I mean, what's funny about it? Tommy, no, you got it all wrong. Oh, oh, Anthony. What if the music you hear is the characters either listening to or recording your live performance? or literally singing it themselves gonna in a realistic way. Baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. What if you did this for the whole movie? No Country for Old Men is a member of this rare category, and the results speak for themselves. The only real music in the movie is here when the main character is confronted by a mariachi band. <laughs> You feel like you're there, you feel like it's real. This is the difference between diegetic and non-diegetic music, or as they are sometimes referred, underscoring and source music. Underscoring is where the music is played as an audio track divorced from the reality of the scene, usually original music written to shadow the action, or source music is when the music has a literal source in the reality of the scene, like a boombox. They can be used to achieve very different effects. But which technique should be used is not always obvious to the people making the movie. For example, in Orson Welles' A Touch of Evil, Welles clashed with the studio on which technique should be used in the film's opening scene. The scene features an extended and impressive one-take shot that follows a car containing a ticking bomb through the streets of a Mexican city. The studio thought underscoring would help add tension and rhythm to the scene. They didn't trust the audience to understand how they should be feeling. The score follows the movements and attitude of the characters while also mimicking the menacing ticking of the bomb and telegraphing the impending doom of the explosion. However, Orson Welles thought source music would be better, as to make the audience feel as if they were watching a real-life event unfold in front of them, without the music giving them extraneous information. The music heard on the radio is festive and upbeat, not only punctuating the complete blissful ignorance of the man and woman in the car, but also giving a tragic irony to the scene. I believe this is the superior version, as I believe it is more tense and complements the one-take shot better. You feel like you're really there watching these things happen, as opposed to watching a choreographed dance with a soundtrack. With the source music, it feels like the bomb could go off at any moment, with the random, untimed planning of something that happens in real life. But with the score, you feel like you're watching something that's not spontaneous, like things are bound to work out in a planned and organized way. Or consider Casablanca a film that takes place in Nazi-occupied Morocco. 
In the movie, an American man named Rick runs a bar, where it is implied that the patrons feel at home or at ease, away from the Nazis' control. Almost like his bar is a little slice of America hidden away in the tense, turmoil-filled country during World War II. You must remember this, a kiss is just a kiss, a sign. When you're in the bar, you hear music played by Rick's friend Sam. You feel safe. When you're outside the bar, you hear the film score, making you feel in danger of the Nazis and their control. You don't feel at ease. You feel uncertain of what could happen at any minute. Here they are. These papers expired three weeks ago. You have to come along. Halt! Halt! This is a great utilization of both non-diegetic and diegetic music in the same movie. Both techniques are used perfectly. The diegetic piano music of the bar and the uneasy orchestral score of the outside world. The audience develops a real relationship with not only the bar, but also the idea of being outside in the streets of Nazi-occupied Morocco. That's good filmmaking.